this is Moritz. In this episode, I will present five artist books that are intrinsic self-reflexive. They solely emphasize A, the physical condition, B, the function of each of the pages, C, the structure with its technical vocabulary, D, the setup for printing, or E, a dialogue with its reader. The publication titled Book by British artist Jonathan Monk, of better said book as written on the spine with 44 O's, was published in 2010 by One Star Press in Paris, an imprint founded in 2000 by Christophe Boutin and Melanie Scarsilla, that has released until 2019 a series of more than 300 standardized artist books, 150 pages in a given format of 20 2.5 by 14 cm black and white offset printed with a limited print run of 250 copies. Monk's contribution consists of just one word with the first and last letters on the front and back cover and the remaining vowel repeated throughout each page of the book block forming the word book. Showing just its physical nature, the book by Monk remains somehow illegible because it is impossible to read the monosyllabic word book with its vowels repeated 150 times in one breath. However, it is a most eloquent example of a book manifesting itself as such. Fluxus artist George Brecht already wrote in 1964 the manuscript for his work entitled Book that was published some years later in 1972 by gallery Michael Werner in Cologne in a limited slipcase edition of 50 copies. The white cloth bound cover with embossed text that reads, this is the cover of the book, emphasizes already the descriptive nature of this 28 pages publication that was reissued in a soft cover version on the occasion of an exhibition on artist books that I have organized myself in Madrid in 2017. What follows is the reading of the entire content along the images of the facsimile edition. This is the cover of the book. These are the end papers of the book. This is the page before the title page of the book that tells you what the title is or was or is going to be. This is the title page. This is at the other side of the title page that gives you information like who published it and when, if it's copyrighted or not, and where or when may be, and perhaps a reference number, if not more. This tells who the book is dedicated to. This could be the contents page, unless there is one later. This is the first page of the book. We are actual on the 11th page. This is the second page of the book. This is the page with text on it, a figure. This is the page that rustles when you turn it, maybe. A page whose corner could be turned down. This could be about the middle page of the book. This is the page with nothing special about it. To be skipped, perhaps. This is the last page of the book. This is the page after the last page of the book. Table of contents, unless there is one earlier on. Two blank spreads. These are the end papers of the book. The self-explanatory book of Brecht not only shows the physical condition of the object and the functions of all its pages, though the elements that makes a book being a book, it also acts as a role model of a book occupying both a real and a fictional space. Compared to Book by Brecht, a book by Rahel Zoller is less meta and more a manual, though an instruction or guideline for book designers that illustrates professional terminologies and the rules of templates. Published on demand since 2011, this book can be seen as a skeleton. Already, the two covers and the spine visually identify some of its main elements as front cover, author, book title, publisher, 
top edge, fore edge, bottom edge, backbound blurb and the publisher's logo, as well spine, tail and head. The interior is structured in three sections. The first, prelims, identifies above all the different concepts of each page, as flyleaf, half title, frontispiece, title page, imprint, dedication, preface, contents, foreword, right page, recto, left page, verso, gutter, and the golden section. The second part, the book block or body, identifies text-related designations as head margins, foredge margins, foot margins, paragraph ending, chapters, dropped title, running title, subheading, indent, widow line, orphan, footnote, side note, or poetry within the text. The third and last section, end matter, visually explains notes, appendix, bibliography, glossary, and index. The following book by Austrian multiverse artist Heimo Zobernik is an instruction too, although far more enigmatic than the one by Zoller, due to its composition and title Farben, German for colors, although entirely printed in black and white. This brochure was published in 1987 by Galerie and Edition Atelier in Graz, as part of a larger portfolio that included as well contributions by the artists John Armleder, Ernst Caramelle, Günther Föhr, Josef Konsult and Sol Lewitt. More than 30 years later, Farben has been reissued in 2018 as part of the artist books Farben Alphabet by IF Publications in Barcelona. It shows on each leaf a number between 1 and 15 in an irregular order, sometimes up and down, and on the remaining leaf, top to bottom, the title of the book. The numbers refer to 15 specific colors of a given palette that Zobernik, back then, has used for more than a decade. Dark red, green, yellow, violet, blue, brown, orange, black, white, grey, lilac, red, bright green, ochre and bright blue. While the order and position of these numbers and the title seems arbitrary, it is, as a matter of fact, a layout made in accordance with a printing document. The recto and verso side of this sketch made by the artist show a chronological and orderly sequence of all the elements as they appear on the lithograph. Folded, trimmed and bound, the sheet forms a signature of 16 pages. Farben embodies a most effective lesson in bookmaking as well as a straightforward conceptual bookwork that explains its genesis. The last example in this segment about tautological and self-reflexive artist books is by former GDR artist A.R. Penck, pseudonym of Ralf Winkler, published in 1976 in a German and in 1981 in a French version, titled Ich bin ein Buch, kaufe mich jetzt. I'm a book, buy me now. It establishes on all the recto sides of its 848 pages a play of affirmative and ambivalent statements questioning the definition, status and nature of a book. Here are the first 20 of its 420 notations. I'm a book, I'm not a book, I'm a picture. I'm a picture book. I'm not a picture book. I'm two books. I'm a book. I'm not a book. I'm a book. I'm not a book. I'm a picture. I'm neither a book nor a picture. I'm a lot of letters. I'm 16 letters and two numbers. Not true. I'm 16 letters and three numbers. I'm 16 letters and three numbers. True. False. I'm 20 letters and three numbers. True. This is not a circle. I'm a square. I'm a book if you read me. I'm not a book if you read me. I'm a book even you don't read me. I'm a book. Don't read me. What better quote to conclude with than Ulysses Carion's famous Dear Reader Don't Read, here used on the cover of his monograph edited by the late Guy Schranen, to whom this episode is dedicated. That's it for now.
Thanks for watching.